Russia's S-400 Triumph, also known as the SA-21 Growler in NATO circles, is widely regarded as one of the world's most capable air defense systems, if not the most capable. Moreover, the S-400 has earned a reputation as one of the few systems capable of countering America's air-dominant approach to warfare. But is the S-400's fearsome reputation truly deserved? Or is it another Russian weapon system that benefits from the Kremlin's well-known penchant for media manipulation to increase foreign weapon sales? Why is the US Army not scared of such a powerful weapon? Stick till the end as we are going to unveil all the answers in this video. First, let's understand the true capabilities of the S-400. The S-400 Triumph, formerly known as the S-300 PMU-3, is a mobile surface-to-air missile or SAM system developed in the 1990s as an upgrade to the S-300 family by Russia's Almaz Central Design Bureau for Marine Engineering. The Russian Air Force announced the S-400 system in January 1993, after developing it in the late 1980s. On February 12, 1999, successful tests at Kapustin Yar and Astrakhan were reported and the Russian army planned to deploy the S-400 in 2001. It became clear in 2003 that the system was not ready for deployment. Two senior military officials expressed concern in August that the S-400 was being tested with obsolete interceptors from the that the S-400 was being tested with obsolete interceptors from the S-300P system, concluding that it was not ready for deployment. The project's completion was announced in February 2004. A ballistic missile was successfully intercepted in April during a test of the upgraded Fort during a test of the upgraded 46N6DM missile. The system was put into service in 2007. In October 2018, a source in the domestic defense industry told TASS that Russia had accepted the 40N6 long-range missile for service with the S-400 air defense system. The S-400 Triumph and Panzer missile systems can be combined to form a two-tier defense system. The Features of S-400 A single system with 8 divisions or battalions can control 72 launchers and a total of 384 missiles. Missiles are launched from launch tubes by a gas system. The downrange rocket motor ignites at 30 meters. A successful test firing of the missile at an airborne target of 400 kilometers was conducted in April 2015. Transporter Erector Launchers or TELs carrying the long-range 40N6 may only hold two missiles instead of the typical four due to their large size. Another test saw a 9M96 missile with an active radar homing head reach a height of 56 kilometers. All missiles are outfitted with directed explosion warheads, which increases the likelihood of complete target destruction. In addition, upgraded guided missiles for the S-300 and S-400 defense systems were delivered to Russian anti-aircraft missile troops in 2016. The missile system's anti-aircraft version, designed to destroy aircraft, cruise missiles and ballistic missiles, can also be used against ground targets. However, the S-400 can intercept cruise missiles at only about 40 kilometers due to their low-altitude flight paths. The Components of S-400 The anti-stealth targeting range of the 91N6E panoramic radar is 150 kilometers. Maximum ranges for targeting 200 kilometers for a ballistic target 390 kilometers for a target with an RCS of 4 square meters 400 kilometers for strategic bomber-sized types of targeting the 96L6 high-altitude radar detector and equipment work independently of the 96L6E low-level radar detector. The 96L6E2 export version can track up to 100 targets and is resistant to false clutter returns and mountainous terrain. It can serve as a command post for S-300 or S-400 battalions. The 96L61 is in charge of the S-400 and S-500 batteries. PBU-55K6E Command Center, with a maximum distance of 100 km between it and the battalion of 98ZH6E when retransmitters are used. Missiles are launched from self-propelled 5PA-5TE2 launchers or trailer launchers, in conjunction with a BAZ-64022 or MAZ-543M tractor trailer. In 2014, a new transporter was introduced to improve mobility while lowering fuel consumption. As a result, transporters cost 8.7 million rubles in 2014. 
the differences between S400 and F35. The detection range of the S400 system's low frequency radars to that of the F117, which has an RCS roughly 30 times larger than the F22 and at least twice the size of the F35. As a result, these more modern fighters' detection and targeting ranges will be drastically reduced. According to estimates, the S-400 can target aircraft such as the F-35, but only once the jet is within 20 miles of the system. As a result, in a future conflict between America's F-35A and Russia's S-400, the stealth fighter would almost certainly win due to the upcoming adoption of weapons such as Northrop Grumman's Advanced Anti-Radiation Guided Missile Extended Range or ARRGMER. The AARGMER is a sophisticated anti-radiation missile or a weapon designed to detect and engage broadcasting radar arrays. This weapon has a range of at least 60 miles and is designed to be carried internally within the F-35's weapons bay, though some sources claim a range as high as 80 miles. The AARGMER has a high likelihood of finding its target if fired from well outside the S-400's 20-mile targeting envelope, though the S-400 will likely be able to achieve a weapons-grade lock during the short time the F-35's weapons bay doors are open, compromising its stealth profile. However, Russian troops are unlikely to be able to test that lock because the anti-radiation missile approaching them will cause them to power down and relocate. If they simply turn off without moving, the missile's onboard targeting system can still use GPS to find its target. The fictitious engagement, however, does not reflect the reality of large-scale combat between the US and Russia, as the S-400 is most effective when used as part of a larger integrated air defense system, or IADS rather than alone. All air defense systems are vulnerable to high-volume attacks, including the S-400. Despite its flaws, the S-400 system is extremely capable and is frequently described as more effective than America's aging but frequently updated Patriot missile systems. However, like many legacy warfare technologies, low-cost missile and drone technologies may be too much for the S-400 to handle. A Russian S-400 battalion comprises eight missile launch platforms each armed with four missiles. That means the battalion can intercept a maximum of 32 targets regardless of missile type before running out of interceptors to fire. With an outside range of about 400 kilometers, even cargo planes like America's C-130 or C-17 could eventually be effective at eliminating S-400 systems, thanks to programs like Rapid Dragon, which would allow them to deploy a large number of low-observable JASSMER cruise missiles from distances greater than 600 miles, though doing so would require good targeting data on the S-400s in question. Opposing forces only need to fire more missiles that can be intercepted to effectively overwhelm an entire S-400 battalion. But of course, the same can be said for attributable or suicide drones. This vulnerability to volume attacks is not unique to Russia's S-400, but it highlights the system's real limitations in a modern peer-level fight. The failure of S-400 system? Russia claims the S-400 system has been tested 32 times across six combat exercises with no failures, which is almost certainly false. Instead, as researchers Shia Kutton and Jeffrey Lewis noted in their analysis for the Nuclear Threat Initiative, it's much more likely that Russia simply does not disclose testing failures. Despite Russia's claimed testing successes, several high-profile S-400 and associated system failures have occurred in recent years. For example, Russian S-300 systems based on the Nebo-M radar arrays have consistently failed to prevent attacks from small drones such as Turkey's Bayraktar TB-2 and Israeli cruise missiles in Syria, and more recently, the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. Is S-400 a big threat to the world? After a few thousand words on the S-400's flaws and vulnerabilities, it's important to emphasize that many of these flaws are not unique to the S-400 or Russian air defense systems in general. As advanced as modern integrated air defenses may be, the challenges of stopping a wide range of airborne targets are simply so massive that no system in service for any country can boast a performance often attributed to the S-400 in popular discussion. The S-400 and its recently deployed successor, the S-500, are indeed very capable air defense systems. 
Still, their operational environments and the defense capabilities of the countries that use them remain constrained by physical, financial, and geographical constraints. Their real value, like that of all weapon systems, can be found only when properly integrated into a larger defensive apparatus based on a functional and effective combat doctrine. What do you think of the entire scenario? Comment your thoughts. Until we meet again, take care.